Hey everyone, this is Neha from Edureka. I welcome you all to this session on Selenium XPath tutorial. XPath is a very important strategy to locate elements in Selenium. It can be tricky and at the same time complex as well if you don't understand basics. You need not worry, I will make this journey of XPath very easy for you. So let's begin and look at the topics to be covered in this session. First, I will give you a brief overview on XPath. Next, I will introduce the concept of XML document and tell you how to write an XPath for XML document. After that, you will see some benefits of XPath. And once you are thorough with the basics, then I will dive deeper into the topic and explain you various steps to write XPath and different types of XPath along with an example. And finally, I will wrap up this session by explaining you about different types of XPath functions along with an example. Without any further ado, let's get straight into the module. So what is XPath? XPath also called as XML path is a language to query XML documents. It consists of a path expression along with some conditions. And as I have already mentioned, it is an important strategy to locate elements in Selenium. Now let's see how a XML document looks like. So this is an example of XML document where you have different tags and attributes. As you can see here, bookstore node has a child notebook and it is further followed by attribute called category and its value is cooking and this book node in turn has two child nodes that is title and author. Now let's try to visualize this document in a tree like structure. So bookstore is a root node. It has two children. Both are book category for first is cooking and second is children and below that both has two tags that is title and author. Now Let's take an example and try to locate author of a book for category children. So we will start with the root node bookstore. Then we will go down to book. Then we have two books here that has category of children. Once we are on the right node, we will go down and pick the node that has the author tag. So this is an expert to locate author of a book for which category is children. So this is how you have to write the expert. That is your root node and your child node that is book followed by tag name that is category whose value is children and the tag will be author. Basically every web page is a document that consists of tags and attributes and by using XPath we can query the page document might be your XML HTML etc. And also to locate a particular element we can write an XPath query that could use elements tag name as well as its attributes and the query would return the matching element in XML. Every modern browser has a built in XPath engine. So this is all about the XML document and XML tree. Now let's see some benefits of XPath. XPath queries are compact and easily parsed and syntax is very simple for simple and common use cases and XPath queries are easy to read and type and they do not return repeated notes. And also you can uniquely identify any node in XML document and query strings are easily embedded in program script and XML documents. So these are few benefits of XPath. I think you're bored of theories, right? Now let's take a real world example and understand XPath. So before that, let's see a syntax and terminologies of XPath. So this is how a syntax of your XPath looks like. As you can see front slash indicates select current node and tag name will be your tag name like input dev IMG etc and your ampersand indicates to select the attributes and attribute will be your attribute name and value implies the value of an attribute got it. So this is very simple syntax of your XPath query. Now let's see some practicals. So what I will do I will launch Google Chrome and navigate to google.com. So here I will try to locate search bar using XPath. So I'll right click on the search bar and choose inspect. As you can see it has an input tag and some attributes correct. So you can see here it has some input tag and it has some attributes. OK now we will use this tag name and these attributes to construct XPath that can locate this element. So now let's see how to do that. I'll click on elements and click control F and now I will write my XPath query. So as you can see here, I can write XPath. I can write string selector and it will try to search based on the criteria. So as it has an input tag, I'll start with double slash. That is a double front slash. 
I will use my tag name as input. OK, and next I will use my attribute. So I have to use ampersand for select attributes and I can see here it has the ID. So that will be my attribute name and within single quotes. What is the value of ID Q close it as you can see here on writing X path that has highlighted that element which implies it was able to locate that element using this X path correct. So what is that X path doing? It says to find an input tag anywhere in the document. Double front slash implies anywhere in the document. OK, but it says it should have a property called ID and its value should be Q. So here we are not starting with the root of the document. That is the start point, but we are typing double front slash and it says anywhere in the document to find an input tag. So we must be having multiple input tags in the document. Remember I had told you in the beginning that X path consists of a path expression. So this is a path expression and here we are interested in the input tag that has the ID attribute whose value is Q. So by using this we are able to uniquely identify this element. So single front slash at the start of the X path instructs X path engine to look for an element starting from the root node like you know you can write it in this way. I'll show you how. So here if you have to write from the start then you have to write from HTML then your body. It is the immediate class so you have to choose it as one and next you have to write your div that will be one two and three div of three correct and again from there you have to jump into your next div that will be your immediate div that will be your div of two. So you have to go on writing this in this way and then you will be arriving at this output. It will be too lengthier and as well it will be very complex to write. So that's why we use a double front slash followed by your input. That will be your tag name and followed by whatever your attribute and the value of attribute. Very simple, correct? So I believe that you was now able to make out the difference between single front slash and double front slash. So now let me reiterate it. So single front slash at the start of X path instructs X path engine to look for an element starting from the root node and double front slash at the start of X path instructs X path engine to search for matching element anywhere in the XML document. So that's nothing but your types of X path that is your absolute and relative X path. Absolute X path is a direct way to find an element, but the disadvantage of the absolute X path is that if there are any changes made in the X path of the element, then that X path gets failed. Correct? So this is your absolute X path syntax example. I just showed you how and relative X path starts from the middle of the HTML DOM structure. It starts with the double forward slash, which means it can search the element anywhere at the web page. Correct? So what does a single slash means if it is used inside the X path? So let's see that now. So let's take an example. Now I will open Amazon.com website and navigate through the search box to locate it. Again, right click on the search box, click inspect. So this search box has input tag and it also has different attributes like type, class, placeholder name, etc. So we will use one of these attributes along with the tag name to locate this element. Again, click on the elements, choose Control F. And now we will start writing the X path. I'll give double front slash input. OK, now I have used double forward slash, which means anywhere in this page. So now I need an input tag, so I have used input. But you can also think there might be many input tags in the document, correct? OK, I understand we have many input tags in the document, but I'll type some condition. So I want a class attribute that will be your ID whose value is this. So now let's see how to do that at your attribute name will be your ID and this will be your value of the attribute. So as you can see it has highlighted the element meaning it was able to find the element. Now let me traverse this document differently. I'll write using absolute X path HTML. As you can see here on writing the absolute X path it was able to locate the element. So now let me tell you how I have traversed it. First HTML of one. OK one indicates the first node. So next this is the immediate body tag. So I have given it as one that is the first child and next it has a div tag that will be your div of one and after the div of one it has header 
So this will be your header. Even this is the immediate first child. So I have named it as header of one. Again, it has the immediate div that will be your this div. And again, that div again consists of its immediate div that will be your this one, which has a ID value of nav belt. And after that, you have div of three, which implies the third child of that div one, two, and three. Okay. Again, this div has a immediate child that will be your div of one, and that has a form. And as you can see here, it is the immediate child of this div, which implies it is the first element. Correct. And after this form of one, you have a div again. So one, two, three. This will be your div. So this will be your div of one again. And after that, you have an input tag. Correct? Sounds very complex, right? To write an XPath using absolute XPath query. So that's why we use relative XPath to locate elements in the web page. I hope you understood this. Basically, this is all about absolute and relative XPath. Now, let's move further and understand XPath functions. Automation using Selenium is a great experience. It provides many way to identify an object or an element on the web page. But sometimes we do face the problems in identifying objects on a page which has same attributes. So when we get more than one element which have same attribute name like multiple checkboxes with same name and same ID or more than one button having the same name and same IDs. In these cases, there is no way to distinguish between those elements and in such cases, we face problem to instruct Selenium to identify a particular object on a web page and that's where XPath functions comes into picture. Now let's see what are the different types of functions that are supported by XPath and how they are used. As you can see here, I have listed down three functions, but in actual there are many. So now I will explain you few important functions that are widely used in Selenium. So first let's start with contains. Contains is a method which is used in an XPath expression when the value of an attribute changes dynamically. For example, login information. This method comes into use. So here it can locate the web element with the available partial text. So let's see how again. I will open amazon.com and choose some image say this one and I'll give inspect. So what's next? As you can see here in the source code snippet for this particular image, it has an image tag followed by its attributes. Okay. Now say I want to locate the source attribute using this value in my XPath query. So how do I do that? I will start with double forward slash and I will use my tag name as IMG because it contains of image and then I'll use my select attribute and I'll write SRC and I will paste this value. That will be my value of the attribute. Okay. As you can see here, it was able to locate this element. Correct. Now you all might think this X path is too long. Well, yes, this is one of the reason for constructing partial X path query as SRC attribute contains URL in its value. So there are chances that value may change or some part of the URL may change. So let's take another example. Suppose say we open login page of the website say xyz.com and it has a button and its attribute has some value like 987 submit 1 to 3 and on refreshing the page its value may change to something like 9987 submit etc. So the bottom line is part of the attribute value is static while the rest is dynamic. In such cases, we would go for partial XPath query. Now let's reconstruct the query and here we will use partial values. For example, say sprites will use the sprites and see how to write a XPath query using functions that is contains. Okay, I'll use tag name as IMG and I'll use contains function and here I'll use my select attribute and this SRC should contain value called as sprites. So within single quotes, I'll write sprites. So as you can see here, it located the element which contains the value sprites. Correct. So this is how you can use partial value and use contains function to search that value. Sounds simple. Now let's move further and understand one more XPath function that is starts with. This function is used to find a web element whose value of attribute changes on the refresh or on any dynamic operation on the web page. In this, we match the starting text of the attribute that is used to locate an element whose attribute has changed dynamically. 
For example, on the web page, ID of a particular element changes dynamically, like ID1, ID2, ID3, but the text remains same. Now, let's demonstrate starts with function using the same object, and here, instead of contains, we'll have to change it to starts with. And here, I will use art attribute. As you can see, it has a value called shop men's athletic shoes. So, what I'll do? I'll copy and paste this value. So here it will locate the element that starts with this value. That is this one. So if I keep only shop and discard the rest, it will show me four more choices that starts with shop. Correct. And if I give the full name, it shows me only one unique element. So this is how starts with function is used to locate particular element that starts with so and so value. Now let's see one more function text. So this expression is used with the text function to locate an element with the exact text. Let's demonstrate and see how. Now see I want to inspect this order tab. So here is my condition. What? It says go anywhere in this document. I don't care what tag it is, but what my condition is, it should have a text whose value is orders. So basically it is asking me to locate this element, correct? So now let's see how. So as you can see here, I'm starting it with asterisk, which implies any tag. Simple. So now I'll write my text function and I'm assigning the value as orders. So now it has highlighted the element which contains the text called orders. Simple. So basically this is a usage of text function. Now we will see an example to use two functions together. For example, say I want to use contains and text together in one XPath. So let's see how to do that. I'll keep this same and I'll use contains function here. Okay. So basically, this is how you can use two functions together in one single XPath. I'm telling go anywhere in this document and it should contain a text called orders. So as you can see here, it was able to locate five elements. So this is one. Your script is one. A href. Again, you have one more here and you have one more here but it was not able to uniquely find because I have used this asterisk. Now if I want to make it as unique, I'll give it as a. So if it starts with a, it was able to locate only one element which has orders. Now if I start with span again, it will locate three elements which has element that is starting with span. So basically what I did here was I used contains and then passed first argument as text function and I gave its value as orders. I did that because we can have a partial search. As you might notice here, we have not used ampersand because text is a function and not an attribute. So this is how you can use two XPath functions together. Now we will see how to locate elements using OR operation. Say you have two input tags whose attributes are different. So here I'll show you how to do that. Bored of using Amazon website, right? Close it. So now I will open Yahoo Mail. So let's inspect this element now. As you can see here, it has input as its tag name and it has name called username and ID called login username. So using all operation, let's locate it. I'll start with my input that is my tag name and I'll give my name is equal to username. Close it. I'll use or operation in between. Pipe indicates your or operation. And then again, I'll start with the input tag name and give ID is equal to login username, correct? So you can see it was able to locate the element. So this is how you can use OR operation as well. Sound simple? So this is all about your XPath functions, your OR operation using two XPath functions in the same XPath query, and that's all. Now we will see how to register the drivers for Chrome and Mozilla and how to send the keys to search the element using Eclipse, okay? So I'll open my Eclipse. First, we'll see how to do it for Mozilla. So I have used class called custom XPath, and inside the main method, I have set my system property and I have a Geeko driver, which is for Mozilla. And I have mentioned the path of the Geeko driver where I have saved this. And I'm creating a new web driver called driver, and that will be my Firefox driver. And using driver.manage, I'm maximizing the window and deleting all the cookies and as well passing the timeouts as well. And now driver.get 
I'm trying to pass the URL of eBay.com. OK, and here by using find element by X path, I'm passing the search box value. I am sending the keys called guitar. I'll show you from where I got this X path. So in this eBay.com, I'll right click over here and click on inspect. As you can see here for ID attribute, it has a value called GH and hyphen AC. So that's where I got this value and I have written a relative X path and I'm trying to send the keys called guitar, which implies it should redirect to the eBay website and search for guitar. Correct. And for search icon, I'm again using driver or find element by X path and trying to search this one. Click over here inspect. So ID will be your GH button. Correct. So this is how I got my X path and I have registered my drivers and I'm using search icon dot click to search it. OK, save this program, run it and see how it works. So it got redirected to Mozilla and it entered the value called guitar and you can see it searched guitar on your Mozilla Firefox browser. Cool. Sounds very interesting, right? So this is how using the set property you can register your Geeko drivers that is your web drivers and then using driver.get you can pass the URL of the particular website and then find the elements and click on search. Cool. Now let's see the same thing with Chrome. So here you have Chrome driver instead of Firefox. I will make it as Chrome driver. OK, that's the only change I'll be doing here. I'll comment rest of the Mozilla part and I'll just run the Chrome part. Again, run it. Now the same thing will happen, but it will open in Chrome. So again, it launched your Chrome browser, type guitar, and it searched. So you can see here you have various brands of guitar with various prices, everything. For Chrome driver, you should install your Chrome driver, and for Mozilla, you need to install Geeko driver. Simple. Now I hope you got a clear idea as how it works. So now, do you wish to learn a trick to find X path of a particular element? Very simple in Google Chrome. You just have to type Chrome path. Click on the very first link and here you'll be having an option called add to Chrome. So you have to just add it when you open your inspect and click on Chrome path. You can see absolute X path and relative X path as well for your particular element or your particular tag. So again, even if I click on here and inspect, I'll get my Chrome path. So this is my relative. And this is my absolute crow path. So when you inspect any element here, you can see the crow path which gives you both relative and absolute crow path of that particular element. Sounds much easier, right? So that's all about the working of your XPath query. So that's all for the session. Thank you and have a nice day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!